So you've got some kind of circuit. Here's ground, here's your input to your circuit, and let's say you have a periodic flow waveform that is feeding into your circuit, and you want to find what the resulting pressure at this point would be at the input. If your signal is periodic, so the flow waveform that is feeding into this circuit is periodic, then what you could do is you could convert this whole thing into an equivalent impedance and be able to use this equation in the frequency domain to calculate your resulting pressure. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial. And so this equation is saying that your pressure is your flow times your impedance. And when your impedance has imaginary components, you need to use this frequency. Uh, you need to use this equation in the frequency domain. And so your pressure and your flow and your impedance all have to be in the frequency domain. And so if you look at these uh, lump com components, here's the inductor and resistor and the capacitor. To convert each of one of these components into an impedance in the frequency domain, you use these equations. So for a capacitor the impedance of a capacitor is this 1 over JWC. So J is your imaginary number, W is your angular frequency, and then C is your capacitance. And the same thing for inductance. Uh, your ZL is, is described by this equation is JWL. And then uh, for resistor, for resistor is very simple. So your impedance is the same as your resistance. And so, so that's all you need to know. Um, for each one of these three components. And to calculate the total impedance of this whole circuit, uh, it's very simple. You just you just basically just add up all the impedances as if they are resistances. And so the way that you add them is the same way that you add the resistance. So anything that's in series, you just add them. If they're in parallel, then you have this equation where you're one over your impedance plus one over the other impedance um, and you take uh, the inverse of the whole thing. So you can review how to do um, how to get an equivalent resistance for resistors, and it, it's the same type of equations that, that you use to get the total impedance. And so you could do this for any kind of circuit. And so for this particular circuit, your my Z total would be described by this equation. And then so basically to find um, my Z total expressed in terms of frequency, I just plug in uh, these ways that I would express my impedance in terms of the component values of the capacitor and the inductor and the resistor. And so here's my resulting uh, expression for the impedance. And so once you have this, then you can go ahead when you have a, a flow waveform in the time domain that looks like this. So here's a waveform. You basically you can convert this uh, into a frequency domain signal and multiply that by your impedance and you will get your pressure in the frequency domain. And then you could convert the pressure back into the time domain using an inverse Fourier transform. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in MATLAB. So I'm going to start MATLAB here. Here's a program that is included uh, with this tutorial that you could go and download. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how you can convert the flow and the pressure and then use that to multiply to your impedance, as I, I just said. And so in this example, I'm going to have a, a flow waveform, and you can also download this. And basically, the flow waveform is just a, a a file with a bunch of numbers in it, and each number is just a, a, the value of the flow rate at each given time. And so I'm going to go through uh, this file and explain what you're doing. And so here you input the values of your parameter in your circuit. And so depending on what you want these parameter values to be, uh, you could input that here. And then you load in your, your flow waveform, and you could use your own file if you want to. Um, and you set the period of your flow. And so how long is, is one cycle, you, you can decide that. Um, here you construct the frequency and the time array for plotting and, and for coming up with your impedance 
uh, uh, arrays. And then so now what we're doing here is that we're taking, we're basically converting our flow, which was given in the in time domain. So here's, we load in the flow waveform. Uh, we convert it into the frequency domain. And so now we end up with our flow in the frequency domain. And then uh, for the impedance, we basically enter this equation that we calculated for this particular circuit. We enter that uh, into our code. And so here's our Z total, and, and that's this expression right here. And so now we have the impedance here in the frequency domain. We have our flow in the frequency domain. And this is a step you have to do. Um, I won't ex go into detail of why you have to do this, but if you don't, then you won't get realistic answers. Um, but basically, at this point, we're done. We have our flow in the frequency domain. We multiply that by our Im impedance in the frequency domain, um, which is this step right here. And then uh, we end up with our pressure in the frequency domain. And so when we want the pressure waveform in the time domain, all we have to do now is to take the inverse Fourier transform, which is this expression right here. Um, and then we end up with the pressure in the time domain. So if I run this file, then um, you could plot that. And so here's my flow and here's my pressure waveform. And I scaled this so that it'll display nicely on the same plot. And so this is, uh, this is how you could get your calculate your pressure waveform um, based on some input flow to a circuit. And you could use this the same program. You could change your flow waveform. You could find what the pressure is. You could also do the inverse. Um, if you have a pressure waveform and you want to find the flow waveform, it's very simple. It's just uh, you rearrange this equation and you can find your uh, Q in the frequency domain by dividing uh, P and Z. And then you could take an inverse for your transform of the Q and find out your flow waveform in the time domain.